some ways we can kind of work around that, all right? Um, we're gonna talk a lot about hip movement. So what I wanna do here when I start, wanna start playing a butterfly half guard is I wanna start hip escaping. It's gonna be hard to stay flat on your back and just put this foot in, okay? I'm flexible and I can't even do this. So guys, from here, I'm still keeping that middle leg engaged. I'm gonna slide out to the side and I'm gonna use that angle to get my shoelaces under his hamstring here, okay? And right now I'm stepping on my own leg, okay? So now we've officially entered butterfly half guard, okay? So from here, even though our feet are in a different position versus last week, okay? We still have the opportunity to hit a lot of the same techniques. So we're gonna go for the knee lever again, okay? And I'm gonna explain after this why it's such a big part of attacking this week, all right? So a lot of things are the same. We're still gonna clamp this elbow. I'm still gonna pull my foot into his knee, okay? And now from here, I'm gonna adjust my hips under him. I'm gonna bridge, and I'm gonna tilt my knees to the outside. Remember, as you come up, very important, keep your head above his head, okay? Once he starts to tip, we can start to drive over, disengage our legs if we want, or just keep the foot in right here for a good passing position. The answer is very simple. You can tell the top person to try to move their knee around. Okay, go ahead. Step your leg up. Okay, that's the issue here. How about now? That's why I'm saying you guys gotta stay tight to this knee. So wherever he goes, doesn't matter. I still have a bite on the knee. Even though my feet are in a different position, this still functions virtually the same way as last week. Make sense? We're just hip escaping. We're getting a butterfly hook. We're retightening our feet here. And now it's just going to be the same thing. Tilt the knees. Make sure your head's coming up higher than his. Then we'll finish the knee lever. What's going to happen here a lot is in this position, off of that off balance, or just in general, he might do things like post out. Okay. So the next movement we're going to look at is what we call a thumb post. If Grant does things like post out, he can get underhooks. Okay. But in this case, we're attacking the lower body this week. We can look to get here. And he uses this to push his arm over and start to attack his legs. Okay. The time he brings his arm over, he's basically giving me what I just did. It's the same thing. Okay. So from here, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to hit the skate. We're going to get our butterfly hook in. He's going to post his leg. Good. Now, assuming I can't extend him away here, or I don't want to, if we're holding this position, my bottom leg wants to be half to calf here. So if Ulysses moves his leg around, look, I'm tracking this leg, okay? Now when I'm ready, this frame on the hip is gonna switch to a C grip in his armpit. That's our thumb pose, okay? Now to actually make his weight move, we need to align our body towards the underhook, so like diagonal this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my knees in that direction. Very briefly, I'm gonna post that bottom foot, and I'm gonna use a small hip bridge to get his weight moving. As his weight moves, I want to lock this elbow up, okay? Now guys, this is not like a lot of other single leg X entries. You're not just going to throw your foot right to the hip. If you do this, this leg's going to go right out the back door here, okay? If that ever happens, go ahead. Your main reaction here is probably just going to be to wrestle, okay? Now, let's not let him get that far. So instead of doing stuff like this, what I want you guys to do is just pull your knees to your chest and clamp the leg here, okay? You guys see his knee is past my knees, it's in my lap. Left. That's a good indication that you have a good connection to somebody's leg. We're not going to stay here for very long, but this is a very important checkpoint. So now if he goes to fail, see, we're attached now. Now from here, it's a very simple thing to take your right foot, put it on the hip, and start making connections here. If you want to go for the pants and wrestle up, you can. Back start, whatever your choice is. Now, Grant was doing this yesterday, he was passing the silver, going to the crab ride. That's a good option. Okay. Otherwise, if you guys aren't sure what to do, just get your elbow really tight to this leg to start. Okay. This will bring you to everything. Toe hold, the heel hook, bank lock, whatever you're looking for. This time, we plant, we align this way. Now, you get a strong guy, they're not letting go of this. Okay. Something you can do here is get both hands through. Guys, watch, this isn't just me pushing him over my head. I'm also gonna duck too, like I'm in his boxing class. Like I'm slipping this shoulder, okay? 
here, my head goes this way. Okay? I keep this elbow up, so if he tries to face me, I have a lot of time to bring my hips back, bring my knees up, and connect to the leg here. Make sense? All right, cool, let's do that. In the side control, he bumps, he pushes your shoulder up, he gets this across. That's an example of using a thumb post as an escape. Somehow achieve that goal from the last drill of separating chest to chest contact, okay? Now this is looking like a more offensive guard here, okay? It's usually either gonna be a butterfly hook in here, or if like we didn't start from there, it'll be like a low shin on chin, or a high, or not shin on chin, a uh, knee shield, okay? Let's work under the assumption that we already had the butterfly hook in, okay? From here, what I wanna do right away when we have all this distance is frame, okay? That same frame we were working with last week, here and here. So Grant just doesn't go right back to the same position, okay? Now, this week, Again, we're going to continue with that theme of going for his lower body. Guys, remember, if you didn't have this footing yet and you're putting it in, don't just dip your toes in. Bring your shoelaces all the way through and make sure you're stepping on your own cap, okay? That's going to tell you if you have a deep butterfly hook here, okay? Move this thing around. Step one. Okay. How about now? Okay. Not tight. So, good heel curl here. Nice deep butterfly hook. All right, now, from here, the kind of the standard is what we call a scoop grip, okay? People just underhook the leg here, okay? You've seen a lot of different people use this for leg locks. Uh, Nikki Sullivan came through, she showed her panda guard, and stuff like this, locking the hands, inverting over it, and so on and so forth, okay? This is the standard, okay? But there are some problems you guys can run into this with. I'm sure you've seen before. You can sprawl before you get this tight, yeah? He could also compound that with a cross face, which is gonna yeah, be really miserable here. So we're gonna switch to a deeper grip here this week. So watch my right hand, guys, if you could. Instead of scoop gripping his leg, I'm gonna go under his shin, and I'm gonna grab it, the side of his foot as close to his heel as possible. Everybody see this? Mm -hmm. So now it's sprawling now, Brent. It's very, very hard, okay? This is a very good grip. If you guys ever can't reach the foot, you can go as high as the shin, okay? So the scoop grip would be shallow here, shin, then the deepest would be the foot, okay? Now, from here, we're gonna start entering into his legs again. So, as I go underneath him, I'm gonna switch this distance frame to like a lat frame here with a high elbow, okay? First one, we're just gonna assume he's neutral. I'm gonna take my right leg and extend it. So right now it looks like I'm doing a hip escape. I'm gonna do what's called a reverse hip escape. So from here I'm using my toes to slide my hips under. As I do, I'm gonna treat this like a thumb post. I'm gonna push him across with it. Okay, now <coughs> we end up right back in the same position. Okay. You bring that middle leg between their legs and you post like this. That gives you the ability to again, reverse your hips. That's a reverse hip escape, okay? This particular technique, is based on the assumption that your partner has a neutral base here. So top person, you just have your weight equally distributed on your knees, okay? So here, go under the shin, I get my lat frame, I kick my right foot straight, hit my reverse hip escape. Guys, I'm not letting go of this foot. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely gonna have some benefits if you track it here. Okay, so hold the foot. Frame tight, knees up, okay? Now we're ready to get that. Make sense? It's gonna take us out of single leg X. We're gonna be attacking what we call saddle now. Okay, so can you have a seat, please? Okay. This is single leg X. It's usually conducive with straight angle locks, outside heel hooks, toe holds, stuff like that. When we enter things like saddle, that's a form of leg locking we call cross ashi. With legs across here, this is saddle. Okay, and then other things like 50 50 guard here. Once you guys get used to this, or you start training or facing people that are used to this, he's going to feel you reverse hip escaping, okay? And he's going to find ways to not let you get under this hip and pull him into single leg X. So a big way he's going to do that, it might be as dramatic as him like slightly sitting down, but generally like what you're going to feel is he just gets really heavy on this hip that I'm gripping here. So I go to hit that first movement and I can't get underneath of him, okay? So we're going to do almost like a hip bump motion from a half butterfly, okay? It's gonna off balance them this way. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that butterfly knee, I'm going to bring it across his hips, and I'm going to start to bridge this way. I'm going to bridge as close to him as possible. My whole body, I'm going to like fall up here. Okay. If you do this to somebody smaller, your own size, you can get them as far as down to the hip. But a lot of times, you know, somebody is positionally aware here, they're going to post and they're going to push back into you. Okay. Now, from here, this leg becomes unweighted. Okay. To some degree. So as I ball up here and I start coming into my forehead, what I'm going to look to do is take out my right leg, I'm going to take my right knee, and I'm going to chop it behind his hamstring. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. I don't just bring it behind his hamstring, I drive it forwards. I want to feel Grant's knee sliding. Now from here, as I drop, I'll triangle my legs, and I'll continue a reverse hip escape, this time to the outside, okay? Now as we land, we want to collect the saddle. So I'm going to let go of the lap at this point, grab his knee, pull it in, and pull my legs in to secure the position. We're thinking about, you just like, yeah, right there. Okay. This, like a, like a weird sideways bridging motion with my hips. So no hands here. Here. Like that, make sense? my knee in, it's the opposite motion of a sprawl. It's making his knee do this. And when his knee starts coming so far forwards, that's when he's going to be really off balance here. Okay? So don't just gently bring your knee over. Really chop it into their hamstring and you're off balance. Okay? Another important note, you guys do not move this foot. Okay? Don't do stuff like this. You're going to get smashed here. Okay? You don't want to bring this leg through. Keep this foot exactly where it is. Make sense? Yep. Right. We're in the same position. I want you guys to get the exact same grips. Okay, here and then here. Go for that reverse hip escape first, okay? If you can get under, great, but he's gonna be heavy on that hip. He's gonna try to stop me. So I'm gonna oblige him and bring him towards that motion. If he wants to be heavy, okay, I'll just push him that way. Okay, getting up here nice and close, okay? Don't try to cut it back here. It's gonna be hard and he's gonna drive back into you pretty easy. We wanna get as close to him as possible. I'm building my base here. I take my right leg out. I chop it behind his knee. I really want to feel that knee come forwards, okay? And now from here, if he falls back, great. We'll come here and we'll just sit back, okay? A lot of times what's going to happen is they will drive forwards and you'll end up on your side, no problem. Just make sure you're using that bottom foot to hit the escape out. And then you'll off balance him, okay? When somebody has a single leg, Okay, here, look, uh, this is a, this movement's referred to as a scissor movement or a kami wasami, okay? This is the flying variation of it. You're literally like jumping into their legs, so that's where people get really like, broken a lot, okay? Same, same position. And here, we've done this before, just not as in great detail, so sometimes it gets left behind. We could do double thumb posts here, okay? So a lot of times when we off balance for butterfly, we did a double thumb post. Okay. Now look, I have a butterfly hook. A lot of times with my butterfly hooks, I can switch to things like X guard. Okay. And where did we go from X guard? We went to reverse X a lot. So from reverse X, look, same thing. What do I do when I grab this leg? I chop the knee behind. See, it's the same type of entry. Off a double thumb post, if you guys elevate here, okay, you get this leg out. Again, we could go right into saddle. This is not specific to butterfly half guard, okay? You guys can find these entries from a lot of different places. Even places where you don't have butterfly hooks like um, knee shield, okay? Somebody's doing coyote guard, okay, half guard. Okay, he comes up with his underhook all the way up to his knees. And we have a lot of good counters there as well. Okay? This move is everywhere. Make sense?